Welcome to Caravan Lifestyle TV. I'm your host, Erwin Clare. We have a special guest for you today. This person, I grew up knowing of this person, knowing about the work that this person has done and the impact this person has made on the world. Well, today, Caribbean Lifestyle, we have a special one for you. By grafting the traditions of American jazz to his authentic Jamaican roots, this pianist has spent a lifetime exploring the rich depths of musical and cultural diversity. In a career that spans more than four decades, you won't see it when you look at this man, though. He has performed and or recorded with artists from every corner of the musical universe. Frank Sinatra, Ray Brown, Dizzy Gillespie, Sonny Rollins, Quincy Jones, Ernest Wrangling, Sly Dunbar, Robbie Shakespeare, and many more. Born and raised in Kingston, Jamaica, he took his first piano lessons at age six. Caribbean Lifestyle, we welcome Monty Alexander. Welcome, Monty. So glad to be with you, Erwin. Boy, you don't know how my Gladbach boss is leaning for, let's say. What? It's uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for welcoming, man. But I must say this, though. Respect due from my, from my peers. Yes. Um, you know, we hear of Monty Alexander growing up a youngster, and I never thought I'd have the opportunity to sit here today and interview you. So, you know, this is something that, before we leave here today, I need your autograph, by the way, all right? Guys, you didn't hear the speech. <laughs> but, <laughs> but seriously speaking, right. though, um, we want to say that um, as a community, we totally appreciate your ambassadorial role that you have continued to play and take us to higher heights. And, and, and we thought it was an old, old man. I don't know what to say, young. What you going on with, man? I've been here from before, way back. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you know, it feels like yesterday. Yes, yes. I was, this music, if you love it and you're into that, the adventure, as I feel it's an adventure. Sometimes you hit a bumpy road or you hit something that's not so the way you want it. But if you love your music and you're dedicated to not the business of music, but the joy and the passion of music, it's like a continuum, it's a cycle that's, that something 45 years ago could seem like 10 years ago. So I lose track of time and I just keep making myself available f to be the best I can be as I go along. And um, it seems like a flash. You know, you use the word, you're just like passion. Yeah, man. Is, is there not passion in today's musician? Is there not passion? I'm sure we have these special people out there that have it, and we know some of the veterans, and once in a while somebody come along that's a popular favorite and say, boy, that's a passionate person singing or whatever. But because that's the thing that is what really grabs the people. You can have trends, they can have styles, they can have the coolest, latest, coolest thing. But at the end of the day, it's the soul. That's where the passion is. Passion is soul. Mm -hmm. you know, it's emotion. It's like when the people praising the Lord in the church. And that's, that's just the soulful expression of gratitude. And, and for me, music is the most wonderful way to express life and this thing called passion or gratitude or, or expressing yourself. Even if you're feeling down, the music is there to bring people together. And I've seen things through music where people become like a family, people who never knew each other when they came to the event. Mm -hmm. And I've gone places in the world I never would have dreamed that I would have gone to wherever and, and experienced just with the piano, playing songs on a piano and how it's possible that somebody could be touched by just that. No tricks, no special no stuff, sound just effects, no, no sound lights. effects, just the piano, no turn the button and really bare minimum of what it is and given a fair opportunity if, if I'm in the zone, so to speak, amazing things can happen. You know, for me. you know, I was in Washington about three years ago mm -hmm. and this is a really true story now because it's Lent and you can't tell like doing Lent, right? You mustn't tell it. Right. No time. Any time at all. Right. Especially <laughs> when you're talking to Monty Alexander. <laughs> And we were, wa we were down there because I, I, I go to Washington from time to time and I don't recall the, the, the club, but the music was coming out and somebody said, I wonder if one of our musicians that down there, it was like one step down, right? And there you were. And, and, and it, was, it was a lot of African-Americans were down there, right? Because a great appreciation for jazz. <laughs> of course, a lot of other folks too. Sure, but sure. when I went inside, I said, my God, look at this. And I look in the room and I said, it's a yard man playing. <laughs> it's a yard yeah, man yeah, playing yeah. right here in what and, and, and again I say, it was not something where you, there was a fly and you went out, but there you were with a group of musicians playing, and it was great to see. The question, where well, I mention this is, is because I want to bring up this point. Many a times, Monte, 
or, or, or icons becomes icons to others before they come icons to us as a people, mm -hmm. all right? Um, when you look at where you are today, the support, yes, you've gotten worldwide. Do you believe you've gotten the type of support, admiration for your works right now from us as a people? When I say us, I mean Jamaican slash Caribbean. Well, I would not even call it support or lack of support. I would just say, are, they a fami are some familiar. people familiar yes, aware yes. of this guy who plays piano, piano. so-called jazz? And come from Kingston. And him, him, him look a certain way. And come from and Kingston. Come from Kingston, Kingston and yeah. him say, one of us. But what is that he's doing? Yes, and yeah. a lot of people hear the word jazz. I, I know a guy, a Jamaican friend of mine, that every time he say me, you still playing that jazz? You don't do a <laughs> thing because that. jazz look like some kind of mad... <laughs> And I say, so I said, so, no, you know, this jazz is like our conversation. It just happens, and if it's a positive thing, it can be a celebration of our, of mm -hmm. our vibe together. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's what the music is. And I think the music business that is so successful, business, I'm not talking music, mm -hmm. the art of music, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's, that's what people are looking at, the latest hit record, the yeah, latest yeah, this, this. Yeah. And I'm kind of coming from the older roots which is the, the, the why I do it. And since I'm so honored, so privileged to carry the flag in my heart, even if I don't have the flag, of something called Jamaica, where I grew up, and it was in that situation that thanks to my parents and the environment I was around in Kingston, that something allowed me to, with the talent, the creator gave me that I could play the piano, but it, that's where I nurtured it. Mm -hmm. So this is my most important reference. And the truth is, you go away from there. I went, I left from, from 1961 the first time, and it was out there that people started to appreciate that I was a jazz musician, a piano player in the, in the area where these, I call them the royalty of jazz, Duke Ellington, Charlie Parker, Miles Davis. And so many of these men I had the honor of meeting so it was my greatest thrill to be around them. But I never forgot home. But I never forgot home. I stayed connected. People say, how come, you don't, how come you don't talk foreign? Because I never needed to talk foreign, even though I tried to get along and fit in. What do you say? When I try to get along and oh, fit okay, in with okay, other okay, people, okay, me and right, right, me right, have right, some. Right, <laughs> 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 But you see, I learned to talk like, uh, like the folks over oh, here. Oh, yeah, because, yeah, yeah. You see, I, I learned. I, yeah. I used to go to the yeah, Carib yeah, Theater. Hey, yeah, watch it now, you know. And when I sat at the theater, listen to you, watch I'm, I'm where, you see, and I put on a <laughs> accent and say, oh, this. <laughs> <laughs> but it is mimicry. It's a, yes, it's a yes, gift to yes, mimic. Yes, yes, yes. So as far as Jamaica noticing me, I'm grateful for whoever got a smile or a dance or like a jig mm -hmm. because I heard something I played mm -hmm. on the piano. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't want to assume everybody knows or cares about what I do right, because right. it's not pop music, right. you know? Take, take us back to, to, to where you're from and, and, and the influences at that early age. I was born in up Mountain View. Mountain View? Born Mountain View, and that was right near a place called Stanton Terrace, yeah. right off of Mountain View Road. And and um, Tucker Avenue, Tucker, right, right, right there right, on Tucker right Avenue. Right across some, tell him, right across some the stadium. Right. Stadium was once that th that time it was Soldiers Camp. Soldiers Camp, right. And um, not far from Excelsior, mm -hmm. where know. where uh, as a youth I remember seeing uh, my friends at the time rehearsing in the in the in one of the classrooms. Derek Harriet and the Jiving Juniors. And he's still going. And strong he's still enough. going, and I go and I start jamming with them with the, with the guys, you know. But before that, my folks had an open attitude towards music because naturally, Jamaican, you're up on the latest or the old time folk songs that mm -hmm. we all love so much, Calypsos and so on. You know about Miss Lou, you know about Ronnie Williams, you know about Bim and Bam. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, from an early age, I started to play the piano uh, just for the joy of it, before piano lessons, entertaining friends, family. and. One of the nicest things that happened for me is I started playing on the on talent shows. Horace for uh, um, um, Vera Johns and um, Vera Johns and um, oh man, you know, famous put on those talent shows at uh, Carib okay. and at um, uh, Tropical Theatre and I Palace Theatre. I, I want you to hold that point, right? Because I want people to think about those names when we come. I want to take a short break when we come back. We're watching Caribbean Lifestyle TV.